And what's up guys, this is Jose here with Captain Hook Tree Climbing. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry for the lapse in uploads. I know that I usually post on Sundays and haven't really been posting. Uh, recently I went to Naom, the Na North American Open Masters Tree Climbing Competition out in Virginia. Had a great time there. Met a bunch of folks, man. Met like uh, Jeff Inman, uh, uh, BJ Brock, a uh, guy named Brick there, really cool guy. Uh, another uh, tree climbing competitor, uh, Noel. Um, so many people, man. So many people. Great climbers. Uh, great vibes. The whole thing, man. It was it was a great time. And so yeah, I didn't post. Uh, I guess two weeks ago because of that and then uh, last weekend I just kind of got caught up uh, working on uh, some school applications so yeah just been busy guys I know you guys aren't going to like penalize me or anything like that but just want to fill you guys in let you know what's going on a little bit um, and yeah just working on top of that and you know Got my son here to take care of, so this it's got a lot, uh, lots of things. Anyway, um, before we start, I'm just gonna say hi to my son. Hey, Jeremiah, say hi. hi. Say hi to my YouTube subscribers. Hi. Yeah, he's a little sweet kid. He's so sweet. All right, so here, just gonna continue up this limb. The whole limb is gonna be removed. So down to the trunk, the base of the tree down there. And um, this was like a little tricky move. I guess I could have just muscled up. I, today, I would just muscle up, do a big power move right up into that crotch, land it in, and then do the muscle move, the muscle up, you know what I mean? Um, Yeah, because that, that's kind of like, it's not a difficult thing for me to do, so I guess I would just do that, right? But, uh, tried to work around it, tried to use my ropes, and yeah, wasted time doing that, I think. So yeah, every time I watch um, my videos and I see how I was climbing, I notice things that, you know, I criticize myself, right? And I'm like, you know what? Next time, I'm not doing this. Um, and I really begin to kind of expedite my climbing that way. It's really... It's such a great journey to be able to have this YouTube channel and um, show you guys what I do. And it also gives me the opportunity to kind of just look back into the archives of some of my climbs and uh, really begin to zero in on where my technique is the best, where it needs improvement, and the things that I can do without. So usually I focusing I focus on editing out uh, those things that I wish I could have done differently. Uh, things that weren't necessary, like I could have just muscled up into that crotch there. But I didn't. So yeah, there's that. All right. Um, See, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just drop this branch here. I set up the, the rigging point there with a the rigging line, but... Uh, Johnny, the supervisor here, he said, go ahead and just drop it. Uh, it was quicker that way. So um, I guess we just went ahead and went the quicker route. And there's the double lanyard technique, guys. So it's not only useful for... Um, 
for passing unions and everything, but it's also useful for like situations like this where you're tied in behind yourself, right? And then you need to come down and stay on that branch, right? So it helps you maintain your position. And it's just, it's really handy having having that double lanyard is awesome. And the next thing I would say is, man, I brought up too much stuff. I brought up way too many things. I brought up this pulley you see there that's getting stuck on everything. And um, I remember this climb was back in March, but I can still remember how I, you know, was fiddling with all the rope I had going up into the tree and then you know coming down and doing whatever i had to do just working with all that attached to me was it was a huge hindrance and the next next time i guess i could just um have the guys tie it on real quick or take up like a ring um have one of those i have a uh, wear safe rigging ring now where i can just attach it to a sling and very have a light compact uh, rigging point that I can rig off of just quickly attach it and bang bada bang bada boom we have ourselves a rigging point a lowering point and it's uh, it's much quicker not only is it quicker but it's quicker in the sense that I'm able to move around the tree uh, much better more comfortably don't have to worry about things getting snagged all the time so that's uh that's a big issue with um being a gearhead you know what i mean i'm inclined to be a gearhead so i'll just bring everything up and then realize hey man probably shouldn't have done that so yeah And uh, also when I'm when I'm pruning, especially, I just I kind of try to keep the canopy intact. I don't cut things that do not need to be cut. I try to avoid cutting unnecessary things because uh, keeping that canopy integrity is the most important thing for me. Um, my focus is usually, you know, just let the tree look like a tree you know you don't need to go and do all this crazy elevation pruning it's kind of useless i mean it might be useful to your eye because you know it might be more aesthetically pleasing to you or to the person the owner there but it might not necessarily be that way so beneficial for uh the tree you know what i mean And just uh, having a more of an intrinsic kind of uh, thought process when it comes to the tree. You know, you want to keep the tree, uh, you know, looking like a tree. Let it be natural. So that's my focus. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm ranting here, guys. <sighs> but uh, yeah, thanks for visiting the channel, guys. If uh, you guys like anything you've seen or heard so far man make sure you hit that like button consider subscribing man uh oh yeah so i did mention that i went to nail now let me tell you I, I met some of the best climbers there um sean welsh was absolutely an incredible climber um there was many others. He was the champion there at Williamsburg. And so that's why I'm mentioning him specifically because he's the one who took the cake at Williamsburg. And man, he did a great job. He was, uh, he was so composed, so like nonchalant climbing the tree, just kind of just had a good run and his audibles were on point right so uh stand clear all clear rope coming down stand clear or stand clear rope coming down things like that you know all 
abilities, they seem little, but they were actually very um, influential when it came down to the points, because that's how these competitions usually are won. There, it comes down to points every single time. It's never usually a uh, a time kind of a difference because points, guys. They usually a lot of points are lost with audibles. And that's one of the easiest things you can do is just be, you know, express, say, communicate what you're going to do, what you're doing. And, you know, going on lanyard, coming off primary, just communicating with the judges. It, it was great. He was really good. Uh, also, uh, James Earhart. He was uh, he was second place, but he he lost by one point to Sean Welsh. It was that close. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. And James Earhart did teach me this really cool DRT trick, guys. Is uh, the um, termination and redirect, right? So that's how he was able to get like a near perfect plumb bob. If not perfect, it was a near perfect plumb bob. Really good. And yeah, so I do need to post those videos. Uh, I took a bunch of videos, uh, especially of the finals. Um, I did upload Sean Welsh's video, but it didn't stay up because it, it got copyrighted. Uh, YouTube blocked it and everything because uh, he was playing music. And so, I mean, I hope I didn't get a copyright strike, but it was just um, unfortunate I'm gonna try to work on those videos because it's on my phone right so taking phones or videos from your iPhone to a Windows computer is near nightmarish and I'm trying to figure it out and once I got it figured out guys you guys are gonna see all the videos of Nam at Williamsburg yeah, because I got to, like, turn down the the volume in the video itself and then probably just put music over it because, I mean, there's no other way. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's just no other way. It has to be done that way. You know, so that you guys can see the video. Um, obviously, you guys aren't going to hear all the audibles and everything, which sucks. But, um... You guys are going to get to see some climbing. All right, so we finally access the top of the tree here and we're going in for one last um, branch, that broken branch there, off to the right. Yeah, this is always fun, just trying to balance in the tree like that. It's always an interesting thing. Coming out to the tips. I love coming out to the tips of these branches. It's like, uh, like an adrenaline rush, but at the same time, I feel very comfortable and confident in doing that. It's uh, just like the weirdest kind of thing. And I just kind of like trick myself out about it all the time. I'm just like, wow, like you do this. <laughs> like what? This is crazy. But yeah, um, definitely understand what you guys go through in your 
daily struggles as climbers, man. And uh, much respect to y'all. Much respect to you guys out there climbing, out there. Um, if you're a beginning climber, if uh, you've been climbing for 30 years, man, respect. I know it's not an easy road. It's hard to come by training if you don't have the right resources, if you're not working for the right company, things like that. That's kind of how I came up. And uh, it's difficult to to work that way because then you don't learn all the the right things that you wish you would have known at the time. You know what I mean? It's like, I wish I would have known this before. <laughs> I've been doing things differently. Yeah. Um, this branch is like chilling right over the branch I want to pull out. It's just like impeding its path. So I'm going to get rid of this branch here. Uh, I know I mentioned canopy integrity and avoiding cutting anything you don't need to but uh i don't know i felt like i needed to do it in this case uh it's kind of hard to see that in the video like why i would need to but when i'm up there and i see things in real time it uh it just made sense to me so that's what it did um yeah But usually my instinct isn't to just start cutting away everything. Um, instead, trying to figure out a way that I can get these, uh, I can keep the structure of the tree there, the existing structure. Right. So that was forked in there was going to impede my path so I went ahead and cut that little branch I think we're ready to go Joe is gonna start pulling or is that Johnny no that's Joe so Joe is pulling on the rope right now and Joe he's been doing true work for about a year and a half almost two years now I think it's about ju just about two years now um, he's doing great man Joe is really great guy man much respect to Joe. Shout out to Joe. If Joe is watching, respect, brother. Uh, anyway. Yeah, the force that it took to break this branch is kind of mind boggling because we're able to base tie uh, into things, canopy anchor, into things that. Uh, can seem sketchy, but actually are just, you know, they're good. They're made, it's kind of like almost made for that. Like trees were made to be climbed. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And it takes the force of nature to be able to, uh, to break these trees. It's incredible. The force that must be overcome to bend uh, branch that way this branch it was a I don't want to say like a good at least four inch branch right there three inch branch four inch yeah man it's not little it's not that's something that you could like create a spar anchor on and uh, and climb off of you know what I mean this branch So I have the double system there, zigzag, and the fusion tether there, double or moving rope system, and a stationary rope system. Yeah, I had a, a conversation at NAM with Lauren Schultz about, you know, I was like, hey, so what, what do you see the difference in calling it SRT and SRS and also the difference between a DRT and a MRS 
is like, well, uh, SRT can mean many things. And I was just kind of like, like, okay, so he's like, in a DRT system, you're still using a single rope. So that's technically still a single rope technique. That's like a single rope technique. You see what I'm saying? It's not really a double rope technique. You get it? Um, yeah, so he was like kind of explaining it to me a little bit more. And I, I started to see like, you know what? This makes sense. Like Lawrence, you're, you're making hella sense here. There's, I couldn't argue with you about that. Like, as soon as he said that, yeah, you know what, the DRT, I'm just like, geez, man, like, duh, right? But it never occurred to me to think of it that way. So, yeah. Um, using that kind of outdated language is, well, it's outdated, and it's outdated for a reason. So it comes down to um, the accuracy of the language behind uh, the different techniques that we use. And these are systems, right? So, you know, I'm going to come off my primary system, get on uh, my lower Ds, blah, blah. So that's like, uh, you know, the kind of language that we use normally. And we use a system using different systems we create systems uh, multiple systems throughout the tree to hold this in there to rig branches the whole shebang and yeah so it just comes down to being uh, a little bit more accurate of the way that uh, we describe things in the industry and uh, yeah shout out to Lauren Schultz man uh, maker of the Schultz effect. If you guys haven't seen his YouTube channel, he makes some pretty cool YouTube videos. Um, he's he's such a humble guy, man. Uh, for you guys that don't know him or met him before, yeah, Lawrence Schultz is a really cool guy. Um, pretty much all the guys there. Also met Kevin Bingham, so the maker of the rope wrench. The inventor of the rope wrench. <sighs> Pretty awesome dude, man. He, he's really nice. He's a little bit more quiet. Um, that's kind of how he came off to me. Um, but yeah, he uh, kind of walked me through one of his... Uh, through his plan for the aero rescue. And, man. Uh, I also got to watch him in the aero rescue. And... He, kind of bombed it but at the same time he killed it because he overcame adversity after adversity after adversity so when I went to go see him he was having a bad throw throw ball day like like the throw ball gods just the tree guys they, they were not with him nope they were not speaking to his cause they they weren't with him I don't know if they were against him but <laughs> Most definitely were not with him. Yeah, Kevin Bingham, man. He ended up uh, bringing the casualty out of the tree within, like, I don't know, about seven minutes. Well, he had seven minutes by the time he got his throw line into the tree and and started to get up there it was about seven minutes and most guys they're in the tree with like 15 minutes left you know 13 minutes left he was down on time so bad so so bad it was it was really bad i felt bad for him um but he kind of just had like this stoic um nature about himself like he just he didn't let it bother him like that and he kept moving forward. He he wasn't um, like angry or anything like that. I think he was probably like you know definitely bothered because he couldn't get a shot in. 
as anybody would be, right? It's only natural. So yeah, Kevin Bingham got up there with uh, just like a foot off the ground. He was about a foot, maybe two feet off the ground when they called time. They said time. You know what I'm saying? So in seven minutes, he was able to go up there, get his victim down, and bring him to the ground safely. Um, he ran out of time, but he he really made it up made up all that lost time with heart um with just sheer persistence and you know just this unrelenting willingness to to finish the climb he he wanted to finish it so bad he brought his game that day he really did much respect to kevin bingham <sighs> All right. Oh yeah. So, and you know, there's there's just a bunch of other clowns that I saw at Naom, and I'm gonna post them for you guys so that you guys can see them. Uh, it's really a great time, guys. I wish. Uh, you know, I really hope that any of you that have the opportunity to go and climb or be a volunteer at one of these competitions, man, take the opportunity. You're, you're not going to regret it, and uh, you're going to have a great time, man, really. Beyond having a great time, you're going to learn a lot. So, all in all, it's a great experience. All right, so back to the climb here. Um, yeah, look at this thing. All right, so that branch right there was um, the homeowner's last request. And yeah, like I said, guys, there's just a bunch of things that I wish I would have done differently. And I think that had I done a few things differently, I would have shaved off like a good 15 minutes off my climb here. Because um, I think I recorded for about 50 minutes and that was with ropes on the ground and everything. Rope in the bag. So it probably took me right around... 45 minutes to uh, to climb this tree and do everything I had to do. And I'm just telling Joe here about the stem cells that exist within the branch, the branch collar, and how they, um, you know, when you make a proper pruning cut, those stem cells are activated and, you know, continue to form a layer around that tissue so that it can prevent any disease, any decay. And that's partly the reason why I hate making big prune cuts like that, the one right there in front of me, because they um, don't usually, you know, have the ability to, to you know, form that protection. And so it's going to be 
basically exposed for the rest of its life until it gets taken down or falls over. And yeah, right there, that's the Mitrakan knot. Mitrakan is a great knot that basically catches every single time. Um, it's not a difficult knot to learn. I use four wraps in it. Beeline. That beeline is awesome, guys. I remember my first time um, buying the hitch climber. Uh, so I was going from a Blake's hitch to a hitch climber and hitch cord, and I had some beeline. And uh, man, ever since then, I just fell in love with the beeline. Yeah, if there's any kind of like special hitch that you guys like to use, uh, let me know about it. Leave a comment down in the comment section. And also, uh, leave any other comments about anything else you saw in the videos. Um, leave some video suggestions, maybe some things that you would like to see in the future. And if you guys like the video, one of the greatest ways you can support my channel is by hitting that like button. Please, please, please hit that like button, guys. Um, much appreciated and helps me out a ton. And, well, with that, guys, I bid you well. Hope you all have a great week and climb safe, y'all. Till next time, Captain Hook out.